세계를 부르다 세계가 부르다 남서울대학교 
세계를 부르다 세계가 부르다 남서울대학교 changing world, NSU is reaching wider, deeper, and higher in its efforts to cultivate leaders that are able to embrace the challenges of today's world. NSU proudly nurtures talented students who will soon become tomorrow's global leaders. to actively promote the idea of servant leadership, emphasizing N plus global education. NSU strives to make its name known by cultivating competent, practice-oriented students. Unfortunately, in today's world, many people emphasize the ends more than the means, and competition over team building NSU, however, believes differently. NSU, a performance-based university, supports students' specific visions and goals with concrete plans, enabling students to turn their dreams into a reality. NSU is a little different from other universities. Here at NSU, we refuse to be satisfied with the present, but rather try to create a new future through innovation. The School of Engineering provides practice-based education that nurtures talented engineers marked by global competitiveness. The School of Business and Management was created with the broad vision of nurturing global CEOs to lead the business world of the 21st century. The School of Arts Physical Education nurtures talents characterized by keen intelligence and strong emotions by fostering their creativity and imagination. The School of Health and Medicine provides welfare in a variety of areas through the use of advanced facilities and superior educational programs. Specialized education enables students to think outside the box and grow in terms of their creativity and practical skills. The School of Health and Medicine provides students with abundant opportunities for growth. Comprehensive support for students based on an innovative educational infrastructure awakens students' potential and lays the foundation for a future society where students and companies peacefully coexist. State-of-the-art buildings, an eco-friendly campus in harmony with nature, and diverse scholarship programs create a healthy academic culture and foster future-oriented professionals who aim higher than their contemporaries.
The global education programs at NSU are both practical and comprehensive. The International Exchange and Cooperation Center nurtures future talents, preparing them to successfully interact with the global world. NSU, through its innovative global education, promotes values that change the world. Servant leadership that promotes a well-balanced society. Acts of sharing with others form the very foundation of servant leadership. NSU fosters leaders who impact the world through positive interactions and by honoring their commitments. Instead of simply passing on knowledge, NSU strives to become an educational institution that makes a significant contribution to society. As we face the future ahead, NSU stands proud, cultivating the global leaders of tomorrow through its unrivaled educational philosophies. NSU leaps forward to embrace a much broader world, thinking deeper and seeing farther than ever before. NSU continues to take on the challenge of cultivating the world's best talents. NSU impacts the world. The world impacts NSU. Hi everyone, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Okay. Hello, so, good evening. Good evening. Okay, uh, so let's start. Um, my name is Combs and I'll be your host. So again, welcome to our webinar. And this will be the last webinar for now with Namsal University. And we have two professor <laughs> guests from Namsal University and I'll introduce them. So uh, first, she is the Director of Student Recruitment and Admissions, MA in TESOL, 18 years of teaching experience, 12 in the private education sector, 6 in undergraduate and postgraduate education, and she is currently teaching in the International Education Department at NSU IGS. Um, please welcome Prof. Judy Young. Hi, Prof. Judy. Um, so please say hi again to our participants. Good evening, everyone, and maybe it might be good afternoon to some of the participants here. Um, so wherever you are around the world, thank you so much for joining us. And um, this will be, as Ms. Kam explained, it will be the last segment of our webinar series. And today we will be focusing on our Global Techno Entrepreneurship Program. Thank you, Prof. Judy. So our second, uh, to our another guest, uh, he received an MBA degree from Aju University and a PhD degree in Global E-Governance and Public Administration from Inha University in the Republic of Korea. In March 2018, he joined the International Graduate School in Nansel University, where he currently serves as an assistant professor and department chair for the Master of Arts in Global Techno Entrepreneurship. He has published several scholarly articles in prestigious international referred journals, such as the International Review of Administrative Sciences, Data and Brief, IEEE, and Industrial Promotion Research, his current research interests include public entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship policy, AI in government services, and participatory governments. So please welcome Professor Muhammad Akhtar. Hi, Prof. Muhammad. Please say hi to our participants and welcome to APP. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for introducing me. Okay, thank you, Prof. So uh, now let's start with the ATC introduction and share my screen with them. So this is me. This is our study in South Korea webinar in partnership with Namsil University. 
So again, this is our webinar etiquette. Keep yourself muted unless it's speaking or engaging in conversation through this background. And to our environment, try to be in a quiet space with as little disruption, kids, pets, etc., as possible. And to your background, declutter your background to minimize distractions or use a virtual background. So about us, our business name is Anicon Travel Consultancy or ATC. Since 2012, ATC is an educational tourism company that aims to unite the world through global education and elevate Filipino academic status worldwide. We work with multiple schools and admission and, and destinations to give you the best possible options for your study abroad plans. Our business address is Unit 1627, 16th floor, City and Land Mega Plaza Building, Topaz Road, Ortigas, Pasig City. And ATC has three different brands. We have Asia, Europe, and Kansa. For Asia, we have South Korea and Japan. And for Europe, Italy, Spain, and Finland. And for Kansa, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. So um, ATC has been an educational consultancy company in the Philippines since 2012. And we bring Filipino students to study abroad. We have already sent a lot of students in to Japan, South Korea, Finland, Italy, Canada, and Australia. So this is our proof of business. We're under J Mission Documentation Services. So why study in South Korea? Uh, first, affordable tuition fees and living costs, scholarship program for international students, faster ROI due to large savings and the ability to sustain own studies and your part-time job under student visa. You can work up to 20 hours per week for undergrad students and 30 hours per week for postgrad students. And Korea is one of the safest countries in the world to study in. So that's all for the introduction. I'll turn the time over to our guest, Prof. Judy. Yes, thank you, Ms. Kams. So uh, I will try to not repeat too much of what Ms. Kams has said in her introduction. Her introduction was actually very thorough. But before I get started with our introduction, I would like to share a video with everyone here. So give me just a moment to share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Okay. Okay, so once again, we are here to represent Namsol University International Graduate School. Um, just a little bit of background as you uh, as you have already heard from Ms. Kams um, and from the videos, for those of you who joined the webinar early, uh, there were some introductory videos and promotional videos about Namsol University, but um, we are a private university that was established in 1994. Um, so although we are a relatively 
newer university with a short history. Um, in that short amount of time, we have actually flourished and we've grown exponentially. We're currently uh, home to over 10,000 students at the bachelor's, master's, and uh, doctorate levels. So we are a comprehensive university. Um, and we have a total of 34 majors um, over six different schools. Um, the International Graduate School, or the IGS as we like to call for short, um, we were established in 2019. Uh, previous to 2019, prior to 2019, we actually were under the General Graduate School and we catered to the English medium programs. So when we established in 2019, we started with just two majors um, and we have now grown into five majors. Um, and all of our majors are 100% English medium instruction. Um, uh, as you can see from this map here, uh, we are truly an international graduate school. Our student body and our faculty, we have uh, individuals representing many different nations all over the globe. We have uh, many <laughs> Filipino students, and we actually really do love our Filipino students. Um, so we would really like to continue that, um, that tradition in being able to recruit some more and um, build our uh, student body with more Filipinos. Um, and as Ms. Kemp's already mentioned, there are many, many reasons for uh, studying in Korea. There are a lot of benefits to living, studying, and working here. Um, and I think, especially for Filipinos, the Philippines tends to be a tropical country um, with Maybe uh, it's hot weather all year round. Many of our Filipino students have actually expressed that one of the reasons they, one of the things they do really appreciate about, uh, appreciate about Korea is the four seasons. So Korea does definitely have uh, four distinct seasons. Some are a little bit longer than others, but that can be something for the students to look forward to. Um, we do offer a high quality education for a fraction of what the students would be paying um, in other countries such as uh, Canada, the United States, Australia, um, and the United Kingdom. Um, and as Ms. Kams also mentioned, it is very, very safe. So uh, many of our students actually do appreciate uh, the safety of the country as well. Again, these are just a few uh, of the reasons. There are many more um, that are not listed here. And maybe in our Q&A se segment, we can also get um, some uh, comments from our current students who I see have joined. So um, more to come later. Um, so in the video that I just played for everyone, you could see that we do have five majors. Um, anyone who has completed a bachelor's degree, regardless of their undergraduate major, they are eligible to apply to our um, any of our majors. Um, we have currently international legal studies, uh, global techno entrepreneurship, which Professor Aftab will explain more in detail shortly, uh, global physiotherapy, international education, and global addiction rehabilitation. So without further ado, I would like to turn things over to Professor Aftab Mohammed, who is our department chair of the MGTE program, the global techno entrepreneurship program. Um, Dr. Hello everyone, uh, good evening. My name is Dr. Mohammed Aftab. I'm working as a department chair of Master in Global Techno Entrepreneurship. Uh, I came from Pakistan. Uh, I did my master's uh, from Aji University and then I went to Inner University for PhD and I'm working here since 2018. Okay, so I would like to uh, thanks to ATC for introducing our university and our programs to the Filipino students. 
uh, as Professor Judy has mentioned, we do have a lot of students from the Philippines and they are really talented and obedient and hardworking students. I love to work with them all the time. And most of them are my thesis advisors. So I'm their advisor. So they are writing their thesis, okay? So Master of Arts in Global Techno Entrepreneurship is a program which has been offered uh, under the International Graduate School. Okay. So as you know that in, uh, in the modern world of innovation and technologies, our global society has a lot of challenges in terms of business, in terms of uh, society, in terms of the government. So we need uh, entrepreneurial uh, mindset people who can solve these challenges in this 21st century. So we need them to equip with the modern skills and expertise in order to solve those challenges. So to cultivate those professionals in this program, uh, we prepare our students to start their own ventures that can solve global challenges. And they can also have an international career with uh, three different emphasis, uh, such as informational, information technological innovation, entrepreneurship strategy, and venture capitalism. So the major courses that we offer under our MGT programs are uh, e-commerce, uh, digital marketing, startup finance, business contract, international business, financial accounting, technological essentials, innovative brand management, research methodologies, data analytic applications, just to name the few. What are the career opportunities for our students after their graduation? So they can uh, serve as a tech entrepreneur. They may uh, find their own, they may start their own startups. They can be financial analysts. They can be public entrepreneurs and they can be uh, product development leaders. They could be uh, venture capital managers and their research, they can be researchers in the entrepreneurship in the entrepreneurship field and university lecturers and many more so to our students there are a lot of opportunities here in korea since the korea is a developed country so actually the startup ecosystem in korea is really well developed so they can take an advantage of uh, many opportunities they can get which are mostly the government funded. And there are some private organization also who they provide a mentorship uh, such as incubation to the international students who are university students in Korea. Uh, so first one is the Seoul Global Startup Center. This is a, a government led program in, in, in Seoul which uh, majorly focus on international students to find their ventures, to start their ventures, and they provide uh, uh, office space and seed funding, and they provide mentorship and uh, networking opportunities, and so on and so forth. And there is a key startup uh, grant challenge that uh, our students can join and uh, bond to Global. This is another organization. <laughs> and there is a, sorry, there is a OSS uh, startup visa program. So students who are uh, having uh, brilliant ideas, innovative ideas in any field, they may join this program. They would get extra points when it comes to the visa and when it comes to the permanent residency in Korea. DIPS is also an uh, incubation center that provides uh, the services to the international students. So there are tons of opportunities for our students to go and start their career as an internee as a uh, as a as a mentee so they can they can develop their businesses over here and there are a lot of growth opportunities for our students okay thank you so much so if you have any question you may ask me
Thank you, Professor Aftab. Um, so I'll just continue with my presentation um, before handing things back to Ms. Kems. Um, as you can see from my screen, um, a lot of the students or the potential applicants to our program, the number one question that they often have is whether they can afford our programs or not. Um, this may come as very good news to many of you, but the programs are very, very uh, affordable. So um, on the screen right now, I have a breakdown of the first semester tuition uh, fees that are expected to pay. Um, and I only show the first semester because generally this will be the most expensive that the students will have to pay. Um, unless you're doing the non-thesis check, <laughs> um, but that's to come a little bit later. Uh, but to apply, we do have a 50,000 Korean won application fee, which is about 35 US dollars. Again, the, the USD um, amount will change depending on the current uh, the conversion uh, and the exchange rate. Um, and then all Korean universities, they do require students to pay a one-time enrollment fee and Namsul Universities is 750,000 Korean won, which is roughly about 520 US, USD. Um, the first semester tuition, uh, international students, they do automatically qualify for a 25% scholarship. So they're expected to pay about 1,700 USD. So altogether, the first semester tuition and fees is around 2,200 USD. Um, the special features of the IGS programs, um, in addition to being 100% English medium, um, we do have small classes. Uh, currently, it's about a seven to one faculty to student ratio. Um, we believe that having the smaller class sizes really helps with uh, building better camaraderie amongst the students. Um, it also provides a better and more engaged learning environment. Um, and we do want the students to have direct access to their professors. So it's one of the things that we do value in our program. All international students, they are assigned to a faculty advisor. So um, from the very beginning of when they start the IGS programs to the time that they graduate. So they are matched with a faculty advisor and uh, the advisor can help with, um, of course, their academics, but also the non-academic um, uh, issues or factors uh, that come with being a uh, foreign resident in Korea. Uh, currently, all of our uh, student advisors uh, are also foreigners themselves. So we definitely know from firsthand experience what it's like to be living, studying, and working here in South Korea as an international resident. Um, so in addition to that, we do also try to um, arrange uh, various educational collaborations and excursions. Um, as you can see, we have um, last year, our students did attend the International Student Job Fair, um, and our students really enjoyed uh, enjoyed that. Um, as Ms. Kams also mentioned, it is legal for our master's students to work part-time. Um, of course, there are certain conditions that need to be met, but it is uh, legal for them to work up to 30 to 35 hours a week during the semester. Uh, these are the necessary documents needed to apply to our program. I'm not going to go over all of them one by one, but I did highlight four, uh, four of them because they these four tend to be a little bit more time sensitive or a little bit more uh, difficult or challenging to prepare. Um, the first two actually go together, it's the undergraduate diploma and the transcript. Um, both of these need to be, so for Filipino ap uh, applicants, they the Philippines is an apostille country, so they these two documents must be apostilled, um, and the original apostilled documents need to be submitted with the application form. Um, for the English proficiency requirement, um, it's good news for Filipino applicants because they are they can be exempt from this requirement on the um, condition that they can provide a letter of English medium instruction from their undergraduate university, and they need to also show us apostilled high school documents, so the high school um, high school diploma and transcript. Um, the final. 
uh, sensitive document is the bank balance. Um, we are we do require a bank balance that's within one month of the printed date, and it needs to have a minimum balance of eighteen thousand U.S. dollars or equivalent. Um, this is just showing the timeline and the process of the admissions uh, overall. Um, once the application documents are ready, they will be sent to us by post. We are still working on paper-based documents, so they do need to be signed and pr uh, printed, signed, and uh, posted by uh, mail courier. So once we receive that, we will confirm and set up an interview. The interviews will take place um, by Zoom, so it is done by video. Um, and once we finish that, we will announce the interview results. Those who have successfully passed will need to pay their tuition and fees for their first semester by a certain deadline. And once that has been done, the university, NSU, will issue the certificate of admission. And that is the document, um, one of the important documents needed to apply for your visa at the Korean Embassy. And uh, the wonderful people at ATC have really done a stellar job in helping the students with the visa process, which is, of course, very, very important. Um, so uh, I would once again like to thank everybody at ATC for their wonderful guidance and helping um, and assisting the students and applicants with this. Um, we have two intakes per year. Uh, currently, we are open for fall semester um, admission. So fall semester admission generally takes place, it starts from May um, uh, to June, and it runs um, until July. And the spring semester admission usually starts sometime in November and will run until January. Currently, we are holding uh, first round admissions for 2023 fall semester. Um, this is the first round, so it is open. It's been open since May 8th. And the deadline for our first round is June 16. Now, I know that this June 16th deadline is coming up soon, but for this applicants who live abroad, um, we will be opening a second round from June 19th through July 3rd. All of the dates and times you see here, they are according to Korean standard time. So please make sure that you keep that in mind. Um, so we are, our website has changed recently. Um, the link is actually quite long, so there is a QR code here. Um, but if you want more information uh, for our majors and the course catalog and also the faculty bios, um, it's all available on our website. Um, when you do get here, you'll have to look for IGS. IGS is going to be for uh, the International Graduate School. Um, we're also on Facebook and Instagram, so um, if you are curious about what kind of activities go on at the IGS and what our students um, experience here, you can kind of check out our uh, social media uh, pages and um, look there. So thank you again, everyone, for attending, and thank you again, ATC, for hosting us. Um, I will now turn things over to Ms. Kenneth. Thank you for doing it. We are doing the screen. So this is will be the package cost for Namsu University. Our first payment is the initial payment of 25,000 pesos. It is the first payment with a signed contract with us before we start your application, and it is non-refundable. So the second payment is the service fee of 50,000 pesos to be paid after all documents are reviewed, cleared, and submitted to NASA University and start of your visa processing. And the third payment is either the processing fee or the tuition deposit. The processing fee is 40,000 pesos. All visa requirements are reviewed and need to pay before we submit your visa in Korean Embassy. And the tuition deposit is around 184,000. Depends on the program, payment terms, scholarship, and final completion of the school. And it is Forex based. So the total estimate package is around 299 pesos and not included your airfare, accommodation, emergency funds, and pocket money. And this is a disclaimer this is a minimum investment. It still depends on your program. 
Okay, and this is the students of APC at Namsung University. We have here Jovi last year, fall 2022. Okay, um, so this is the video review of Jovi for APC during her pre-dep orientation with us. So, yeah, hold on. There's no sound. So first, super excited because, syempre, it will be my first time in South Korea. But um, at the same time, ano din, sad because I, I mean, pandemic and then I have to leave my family. But anyway, I'm doing this for the future that I need. Not for myself only, but of course for the whole time. I'm mo nung hesitant ako. Kasi nakita ko lang to sa Facebook. As in, wala akong kamilala, wala akong anything. And then, all of, wala rin akong plan na mag-pursue ng masters. And then, I don't know, all of a sudden, parang gusto ko siyang i-push. Not because, nakita ko kasi, uh, since for me, international education, I tried to search the university, I tried to search the course itself. And super interesting siya. Ang dami niyang benefits ng and dami kong benefits na magigain in the future that will be helpful for me. Yung master's na kukunin ko is international education wherein hindi siya available here in the Philippines and even in other countries. So, dun lang talaga, as in sa Namso lang. So, that's the first one. Second, I'm thinking about my family. So, if ever na they want to travel, easier. Mm -hmm. Super easy because four hours away lang. Checking with them, super smooth ng akin kasi in five days, Na rin. Just want to take this opportunity uh, pala to uh, uh, say thank you to the whole Annika Travel, you know, ATC Asia. Kasi naging smooth yung processing. Everyone, please, wag na kayo mag-hesitate. Try, you know, try to inquire first if you're hesitant, okay? That's understandable, but please try to inquire and pursue your dreams, you know, with ATC Asia or worldwide na nga, ayan dami na, di ba? Yeah, pursue your uh, dreams, your future, you know. It's never too late to start. I'm I'm 28 already. I feel so old, pero I think that this is the right time for you. Even though it's pandemic, I hope that everyone is safe, but still, no one should stop you for uh, pursuing your dreams and believe in yourself, of course. Okay, that's Judy, one of our students by Namsung University. So, uh, this uh, screenshot video uh, it, during her interview in Philippine National in, in Philippine National TV last year during the incident happening in Itaewon. And Judy was interviewed here in this video. So, uh, before uh, q and I would like you to uh, introduce Prof. Judy. We have a guest here, Mr. Aldrin, or you can call him Sir Dre. He is our student for this year's fall intake. And he is going to take the Master's in Global Tech and Prep. Hi, Sir Aldrin. Um, hello po. Good evening. Good evening, Sir Adrian. So, uh, this is Dre. He's going to take the Masters in Global Tech and Trapeze Year's Fall Intake in Namsung University. Thank you for joining us, sir. Yes, po. Uh, yes, and I'm so excited and for the uh, duration of the program. Yeah, thank you. Do you have any questions for us? Yes. Uh, uh, I have question. Go. Sorry. Sorry, sorry uh, Mr. Mr. Aldrin, go ahead. I think you have the floor now. Um, actually, <laughs> yeah, I'll take up some question. I, as of this moment, I'm currently preparing for some documents, and we're almost there. <laughs> great, great. Yeah, trust trust the ATC that you are in very very good hands. I know. Thank you. Thank you. So now, uh, we're now open for Judy. Or... I have a question, please. Hello, Mr. Bilal. <laughs> thank you for joining us again. He's joined us thank for all of our webinars. Yes, thank yes. you so much. Uh, uh, good. I first appreciated you, ma'am, the honorable my teacher, and respected Yang Judy and Moment of Tapsa. So I want to ask a question from you. 
Uh, if a student got uh, uh, four by four CGPA in about A plus grade in first in first semester in Namsul University, uh, uh, the scholarship will be remain or increased in the second semester in Namsul University. That's a good question. Um, so we do have, uh, as I showed you a, a few moments ago or a few minutes ago earlier in the webinar, um, the first semester students, they get 25% scholarship um, when they continue their studies. And if they can maintain a 3.0 GPA, they are guaranteed at least 25% in the following semester. Okay. So, and I want to ask questions from uh, Muhammad Aftab sir. He's my country yes. teacher, please. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> Sir, how are you? Uh, first, Good. I am feeling to see you. I am feeling to see you happy, uh, to see you as assistant professor and uh, reputed and the international university. Good. Uh, sir, uh, first, I want to ask uh, your native city in Pakistan. And, I'm, uh, I'm from Vihari. Oh, yes. Good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very good. And sir, uh, second question, uh, how many are there chances in South Korea to, to get PR after PSD? <clears throat> Just to tell you my story, I came here uh, in 2014. So it took me almost uh, eight years to get permanent residency over here. So it also depend upon your efforts and the way you choose. So I did masters and then PhD and then uh, a job in this university. And uh, also, I have some activities over here other than my job, like uh, learning Korean language that I don't know much, but I had a basic requirement that was required at the time. So it takes mm -hmm. uh, about, uh, if, if you are good at uh, learning the language, so you may get uh, even faster than I, I got. So yeah, so uh, usually it takes four to five years to reach mm -hmm. at this goal. Uh, that's good. Sir, I got to admission the first time in Namsa University, but uh, unfortunately, I uh, failed to get student visa with mm -hmm. the South Korean Embassy in Pakistan. So mm -hmm. I am again to, I am now I'm also going to uh, uh, to get admission in Namsa University in first mm -hmm. round. Now, uh, now I am putting to application in first uh, one or the second day, of the third or fourth June. Mm, all right, all right. So, okay, uh, so try this time. I wish you good luck. Okay, if you need any luck. help, so, so I'll be there to support you. Thank you. Okay. Um, that is actually one of the really. I know that, uh, Mr. Bilal, you will not be able to because you are. Uh, not in the Philippines now, but for the Filipino applicants, um, I really, really do. Uh, I'm very appreciative of ATC because uh, they do really help with the visa process and uh, their visa issuance rate of ATC applicants is very high. So um, I'm very thankful for that. Um, I would also like to turn uh, your attention to, we actually have two of our uh, current students. Um, uh, I'll first ask uh, Mickey Ohastro, Miss Mickey Ohastro, she is actually um, our current NGTE student, a Filipina, and she has also came to us from ATC. So, um, Mickey, can you maybe say a little hello to our audience and also um, tell some things that you appreciate about Korea and about your experience at the IGS or Namsol University? Uh, hello everyone. So I'm sorry if it's a bit loud. Um, I just came from Professor Aftab's class and currently I'm outside. So apologies for like the background noise. But overall, um, like a little bit about me. So I'm Miki and I'm currently a third semester student at Namsol University and I'm taking up MGPE. And um, I'm actually I'm actually one of the thesis advisee of Professor Aftab. So uh, what I like um, about this country is that uh, transportation is very convenient and it's very safe. And currently, since I mentioned that I'm outside, uh, I don't hesitate to like bring out my phone. So we know that in the Philippines, like you have like reservations in bringing out your phone. So overall, it's a really safe country and. Um, for for uh, Namso, the community is very good. Um, I as an introvert, I had a hard time uh, coming to terms, like moving to another country. 
But when I came here, uh, everyone was very warm. Even the professors, all of the professors are actually warm. And they are very accommodating. And every query that I had, um, they have answers to. And I would also like to express my thanks to ATC. So ATC also helped me with my visa requirements, with my application, and they guided me all throughout. So even when I came here, um, it was during the pandemic time. So it was uh, spring of 2022. So the borders are still uh, a little bit closed. So one of the alumni of, or one of the alumni of uh, Nam Seoul, uh, Miss May, uh, she was working with ATC and she was uh, the one who actually um, supported me when I came here. So she helped me find an apartment. Um, she introduced me like to the whole area and as well bring me to uh, the location of the university. And overall, I was able to find my way here and along the way you still learn a lot you still learn and of course your friends your peers or the community especially the professors will always help you along the way and please do not hesitate to ask them questions and also you can uh, reach me as well um I, i'll be trying to give like my email here of some sort and you can ask me if you have any questions about uh, living here and um, as well as uh, any questions that you might have or like fears that you might have. So thank you everyone and I hope to see you here uh, next semester or in the upcoming semester. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mickey. Are there any questions for Mickey? No? Um, I would also like, actually, I wasn't expecting her to join, but I'm very happy to see her. Um, Ms. Aya, uh, Aya, I'm sorry, Ms. Aya Almarez. She is a current student in the International Education Department. Um, so, uh, Aya, can you maybe just say a few things that you enjoy about Korea and um, maybe your experiences here at Namsol University? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I, the most thing that I like about Korea is that uh, it's a very safe, it's a very safe country and uh, the tra transportation to uh, uh, to move from one from city to another one is very easy. Uh, and um, the most things that I appreciate about uh, Nam Seoul University uh, that uh, my educational background or my educational um, uh, my educational um, uh, knowledge become more deeper. I am an MIE uh, student and uh, I really appreciate what professors do with us to um, become an international uh, uh, educators. Uh, so I can um, feel the difference between my uh, previous educational background and uh, current educational knowledge uh, that I learned at NAMSUL. And also I appreciate that um, uh, the warm atmosphere that uh, professors work hard uh, uh, to um, make us uh, feel that we are with our um, uh, family. <clears throat> So I do appreciate, I, I am so grateful to be a NAMSOL uh, student, and I hope that everyone uh, of you or each one, uh, each student can join us. Thank you, Aya. And uh, I don't think it was mentioned, but Aya is actually from Egypt. So, yes. Um, I, I don't know if there are any other questions. We just had uh, someone join the webinar. Um, yes. Are there any other questions that we can answer for you? Uh, Prof. Judy, is there an age limit? Is there a what? Age limit. There is no age limit to apply. Actually, that's one of the comments I wanted to make after Jovi's video. Um, she said that she's 28 and she feels a little bit old, but it's not old at all. So um, we don't have an age limit. And there's actually, it's never too late to start, right? So. Um, we don't have an age limit to apply. 
Okay, thank you. That's good to know. Uh, we're always receiving a lot of injuries that they're already old and then, and then uh, we told them that there's no HD in the country, so you know there's HD. Well, that's also one of the good things about a graduate program is because um, once students finish their undergraduate uh, degrees, they usually want to start working and they build up their experience in the workforce. And then maybe after a few years of working, they might decide to further their career or maybe to um, extend or go into another uh, area or field. They might um, want to pursue a master's degree or postgraduate degree. So, yes. Um, some of our students, uh, they do come to us straight out of um, undergraduate studies, so they're they're still quite young, but they have no work experience. Um, but then we also have some students who have worked a bit um, after university and they decide to further their education at a later time after working and they start uh, a little bit later, but they also have um, a very, very valuable work experience. It is possible for our master's students to invite their families, although uh, it, it is very difficult, almost impossible to do it in their first semester. So um, generally the, the route that they want to take is they want to establish themselves here first, at least for one semester before they can um, invite their family. Um, Professor Aftab, do you have anything to add? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, the uh, Korean embassy in your country, they might require your alien registration card when it comes to inviting the family. So once you come to Korea, it almost takes two to three months while, when you get your alien registration. So there is no such regulation that you should wait until that, but uh, as Professor Judy has mentioned that you first need to establish over here, so it takes almost six months, so you can safely apply in the second semester, so then you would get better chance to get a visa. Yes, we have a success case here. Uh, Ms. Aya actually was able to invite her son. Um, uh, but again, she had to invite him after. I, I believe most of the, not all Korean embassies are the same, but some, most of the Korean embassies, in order to invite your dependents or your family here to Korea, if you are on a student visa, they, they do, most of them will require your transcript. So the transcript is not available until after you finish your first semester of studies. So yes, uh, long story short, it is possible, but maybe not right away. Thank you, um, Brown. And also, uh, NSU has a Korean language program, right? Yes, um, they have. we have our own Korean Language Institute. Um, the IGS students do get a 50% discount, um, but it is a quite intensive program. Um, and besides that, we actually have, um, not we as in Namsul University, but the government of Korea has a very good uh, Korean language program and it's recognized as, it's called the KIIP. Um, and Ms. Aya is actually also taking that. Um, it is a very competitive program because it is recognized by uh, officially um, as a Korean score. It's um, equivalent to the TOPIC exam, um, but it is free and it's ran by the Korean government. So um, the students who are interested in learning Korean, they can, ah, yes, Vicky is also doing her first level of KIAP. So both of our students, actually a lot of our students currently enrolled in the IGS are taking the KIAP program because it is, again, it's an official, it's officially um, recognized by many institutions and it can be a substitute for the TOPIC exam on many um, applications. It also will help the students after they graduate from our programs here, if they want to stay in Korea, they have to change their visa to a work seeking visa and it can really help with getting more points if you have a Korean language score. Thank you, Dr. Judy. Do you have any questions? Okay. So I guess uh from Judy never got stress. So I should be screen open. So again uh, thank you for joining us.
with uh, with our webinar with council. So thank you for listening. So if you have any questions or concerns, you may reach us here at our Facebook page ATC Education Marketing Asia and to our Gmail ATC Asia at gmail.com and to our WhatsApp number plus six three nine zero five five two seven four two five four. So again, I thank you for joining us. I can thank you, Prof. Judy. Thank you, Prof. Aftab, to Ms. Aya, Ms. Mickey, and Sir Alvin. And so also, everyone, thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, APC, for hosting this wonderful series of webinars for our programs. Um, again, I can't express enough how grateful we are at Namsul University for partnering with ATC. We've worked with them many semesters. They are really familiar with the paperwork for our university and then the application process. Not only that, but um, as Mr. Bilal has uh, explained, even if you are admitted into the program, uh, international students have the final hurdle of earning their um, the visa, and uh, admissions will mean nothing without that visa. So the people at ATC, they really uh, are very good about um, uh, orienting the students and helping them prepare their documents and uh, applying for the visa and getting a really high visa success rate. So um, yes, anyone who is applying through ATC, uh, they are in very good hands. So thank you everyone for joining. Thank you to APC for hosting us. Um, Professor Aftab, do you have any final words? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Kems. We really appreciate the efforts that you do to recruit good number of and quality students for our programs. We really appreciate that. And uh, I want to ask, where is your location? Is it uh, far from Pampanga? I have a plan to come to Philippines uh, this month, by the end of this month. So if it is near, I will visit your office. Uh, no, uh, we're located in Pasig City, Metro Manila. But my province is Papanga. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, if I visit the Metro Manila, I'll come to your place. Uh, sure, sure, sir. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you, sir. I'll see you soon. <laughs> thank you. So uh, thank you everyone. Good bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye bye. bye. bye.